Hi guys, welcome back. So after a few days of nice strong rebound, we had a little bit of a pullback today with some of our stocks, which is kind of expected anyways. It's not sustainable to keep running like that. But as you see, the ARKK is not even pulling back that much because the buy-in volume a couple days ago was quite strong. So I do expect it to just slightly backtest some main supports and bounce off from there. So that would create good buy-in again for the growth stocks. And Russell 2000 just backtesting the support as well. This morning, I sent this on the Discord and I anticipated for Russell 2000 to dip and make a W shape like all those times before when it reached the lower range of support, like here, one, two, three, back in March, May, and July. This time is the third time, so it's quite possible, I think, to make a similar pattern after reaching this support, and that would be a good buying opportunity again for the small caps. If you look at Russell 2000 in the long term, ever since the bottom in March 2020, it was just running up strong and then until this year, mainly stay on the sideway to consolidate within the same range for the whole past seven months. I think this is a bullish signal because it was running up more than double already and it's normal for it to come back down you know to support for example the previous high before the covid but it never did and for the whole time it was staying above at a relatively high level so i think it's a good sign because it means every time it dips to this lower range of supports there is always money to catch the dip so it doesn't fall below or drop or break the support. So that's why I am still bullish on the small caps for the longer run and think that one day it finished the consolidation within this area and it can eventually break out so we can have another leg up. But for now, we need to be patient with it. Wait until a lot of the retail investors are desperate and feel that there's no hope on small caps, then maybe the reversal would come at that time. While most of our other stocks were just mainly consolidating, going on the sideway, EH dropped the most out of all and the whole day it was just falling, falling until the closing with no buying the dip sign. So if you just look at the day's movement, it looks very much scary, like it would continue going down, which is good by the way, so we can accumulate more shares at a cheap price. Because right now the share price keep dropping, making the company look more and more a good deal. As things are going better and better for the company, a lot has changed since we first but in EH, the new products, more test flights, more cooperation with different countries, more projects going on, making the company have better and better fundamental and prove that they really have the most ready technology out there. So it really doesn't make sense that the share price does not affect the company's progress at all. Other than the expectation on getting the airworthiness certificate, there is more things that happen in between. For example, Ihan is working with this company called Globovia. It's a leading global transportation infrastructure concession management company in the field of urban air traffic. So they're working with this company to develop the urban air traffic in Iberian Peninsula and Latin America. So more countries are recognizing the technology of Ihan to be the world's leader and start to work with them to develop the air traffic program for the country. So news like this just keep coming out and we just know that the company is work working on the right track, including the air taxi and also the air logistic solutions and more cooperations with give Ihan more experience into solving different problems, accumulate more experience before the competitors, giving them great early or first comer advantage, just like we expected, like Tesla in the earlier years. And here, last week, the Chinese government, the China National Fire Equipment Supervision and Inspection Center completed the technical inspection of the Ihan EH216F which is the model specifically 
designed for the firefighting in urban high-rise building, which is a great supplement for the firefighting system. We talked about this in the first video of Yiha. I said this is very much needed in China because most people live in the high-rise building. So whenever there's fire, it's quite dangerous. Plus the traffic is bad. And when the fire truck needs to get to the scene, sometimes it's stuck in the traffic and adds more danger to it. So it's very necessary for this kind of technology to help supplement, to solve the big problems right now. And I said that I thought every city in China should at least buy one. And just for that alone, it would be more than 200 units sell in one year. This is extra source of income, B2G business to government business. So then they can have more revenue stream coming before the commercial use for the air taxi. And now they have finished the technical inspection. We might not be far away from that. And also thanks for my Discord member Brian to share this video from East West Connect and reminded me that it is very, very possible for Ehan's drone to be used in the Beijing Olympic that is coming up in February. 2022, which is in just a couple months away. This is truly exciting and very important. It is the second time for Beijing to host the Olympic game. And I think they would continue to treat this very seriously, just like last time, especially with the recent war going on between the US and China. So much political issue, bad news about China and COVID. I think China would really need something like this to kind of boost a little bit of the public image. So I think this event is very necessary at this time. And last time in 2008, I remember there was a lot of regulations about the traffic in Beijing because traffic in the first tier city in China is just really a big pain. So that's why at that time during the Olympic in 2008, the government did a lot of changes to the traffic during the period of Olympic. A lot of planning, regulating routes, restricting traveling, drawing zones, etc. Very complicated. But this time, if there is Yihang to be responsible for the air traffic, it would not only help solve the traffic issue, it would also showcase the advanced technology in China for air mobility. It would be one of the scene and experience for tourists and reporters. So I think they should really include Yihang to be one of the key elements in the traffic planning for this Winter Olympic. On top of that, if you still remember back in January this year, we saw the news that Yihang won the urban air mobility call from Paris. They were selected as a key member out of 150 applicants from 25 countries. So very competitive game there to build the future urban air mobility ecosystem in the Paris region in prospect of the 2024 Olympic. So yes, Yihang was not the only company that was selected, but one of the key members to cooperate for the ecosystem of the UAM. So Paris had this plan of the air taxi for the 2024 Olympics. And if Yihang can already be the UAM operator for the Beijing Olympic in February, that would be huge for Yihang and give them great advantage for the Paris Olympic in 2024. So that is definitely another quite exciting thing to look forward to. Very, very important indeed. Okay, now let's sort out a little bit of the timeline here. Because in the 2004, I think the goal is for Yihang to play an important role for the France Olympic. So then before that, we need for Yihan to put it into practice. Already put in use for the solution of UAM for Beijing Olympic in 2022, which is only in February couple months away so then it can help the France Olympic because Ihan would have the most experience put into real use. So that means the certificate would for sure be granted before then. But the thing is, we cannot grant the certificate and right away put into use for international tourists because we need more trials. We need more up and running experience to refine the model, refine the system first. 
So this we would need trial and refinement for a few months at least. So then we can put into the serious use for the Beijing Olympic officially because we gotta make sure the system is smooth first. And I would think it would at least need like three to five months at least for the refinement, which gives this kind of an urgency to grant the certificate by September and latest November. So yeah, that's why right. if they are going to be put in use for the Beijing Olympic, that means right now the certificate is really in the urgency process. It's very much necessary to have this by that time, which happened to also align with my prediction before by the end of quarter three. So September to get this certificate and put into commercial use so we can move things up and get into the trial and refining stage. And in the middle, it happens to be the October 1st, which is the National Day of China. So a very good occasion to showcase the drone if they really want to encourage people to start taking air mobility more seriously and showcase how advanced the technology is given the fact that this year is the 100 year anniversary of the CCP, it would definitely be a nice detail to showcase the advancement of the air mobility solution, being the leader of the world in this field. So now we see that things should be happening earlier than we expected. It is time for us to take air mobility more seriously because we might be flying in the sky earlier than we thought in the near future. Even though this is all anticipation at this stage, I still feel like very optimistic about Yiha, especially looking into the one to three years future. I just can't wait and very excited to see people using the drones to fly into the different locations. Watching it in Olympic alone would make me very exciting. So that's why the more the share price drop, the more I just feel excited for it. There are so many reasons to support it. And I cannot think of any reasons for the share price to drop like this. Other than the fact that one, the big dogs need to collect more cheap shares, kind of steal retail investors shares by cutting loss, especially if they know good news are coming, then they might think it's urgent to beat down the price so then they can collect more. And number two is that the company try to keep a low profile because recently a lot of the technology companies that have better or leading technology in the world, the most advanced in the field, it would tend to get delisted or blacklisted by the US. For example, like Huawei got blacklisted. It had the most leading technology of 5G and a lot of the other technology like artificial intelligence. That would be the leader of the world, but it got blacklisted and not just in US, but also many companies in other countries cannot work with Huawei either. For example, the supercomputers company in China, because we know that the supercomputer is the most advanced in China and they got blacklisted. And one of the leader of solar sector, Da Quan, the ticker symbol DQ, also got blacklisted by the US government. So they just got a secondary listing in Hong Kong. So it seems like it's getting into a clear pattern that whatever leading technology the Chinese companies have, the US government might blacklist it. So that is the other reason I can think of why the share price has been driven down because maybe they need to keep a low profile at the time being when things are getting sensitive between the two countries. Maybe, I don't know. But anyways, none of this would affect the company's fundamental. The US can at most slow down the Chinese technology, but cannot stop it from happening. I strongly believe that the China would be the leader of the new technology in many fields, and it's impossible to stop it, but at most just a slowdown at the Point. So I would definitely take it as a chance to collect cheap shares if you have also a long term vision and can be patient when the share price does not reflect the company's future. For me, I just think the risk reward ratio is quite good. The reward is huge compared to the risk. So I would be happy to buy more. 
since my last buy-in price was at 27.9 so my next buy-in target would be looking at around 25 so on weekly chart when it touched the 60 ma i said i had accumulated 4,000 shares before this run up and i had to trim it down to 2000 but i just trim it down to 2500 and already it went down and now it's at the 20s again and i've been accumulated more and more because i just think that it has gone down to too low valuation a good bargain again okay now that's it for today and if you have enjoyed this video please give me a big big like and write me a great comment and i'll see you in my next video that's it guys hope you can find my videos helpful make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a big like thank you